The Rochdale by-election takes place this coming week and a by-election that should really have been about local issues and, for example, the poor conditions of so many people who are living uh, in Rochdale, like, for example, the toddler Awab Ishak, uh, who died in 2020 from severe respiratory condition because of exposure to mould in his home, which was owned by the Rochdale uh, borough-wide housing. Uh, this is... In, instead, the election has been catapulted into the national and international debate because of the prominence of the Gaza crisis, uh, because of the uh, involvement of firebrands like George Galloway, who I think is probably set to win this, and because of the uh, stupidity and um, intemperate language of Azhar Ali, uh, in which he said that Israel had allowed Hamas to attack on October the 7th. This, this um, obsession that we seem to have dropped into with supporting conspiracy theories uh, because we're reading too many things on social media. There's room for conspiracy theories uh, in the same way as there was room for Eric von Daniken in the 1970s. I much enjoyed the books of Eric von Daniken. I, 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 I giggle over a number of conspiracy theories at the moment, but they are nevertheless conspiracy theories. And they shouldn't be taking a major role in a local election. And yet, that's where we are. That's where we are. Um, and the and, and, and the Labour, the, the inability of Labour to deal with the lingering anti-Semitism crisis. This is basically a crisis which cannot distinguish between... Um, a, uh, a rejection of Netanyahu and the right-wing governments in Israel and an, a, a rejection of Israel and indeed a rejection of the Jewish community in the UK. And it's simply wrong. I see no problem. Uh, and I, I, I see no problem with, for example, rejecting Netanyahu, accepting Israel, and promoting and encouraging the Jewish population in the UK. I see no problem with that. Indeed, the Labour Party was deeply protective of Israel in its early days, particularly because of its left-wing um, uh, governments. And I, I don't see quite, in a sense, what has changed. Um, the the Palestinian problem has always been a problem. So at what point did the Labour Party acquire a conscience? And, uh, and, and that's a question that needs to be asked. I think uh, all the time there has to be a question about uh, the need for a two-state solution. That's something that should have been established right at the beginning. It was offered, it was rejected, wars developed the wars were still not resolved in fact what we what we've had since 1948 is a series of ceasefires that isn't a peace that isn't a solution that is a temporary halt that is a pause and that is wrong and what what we need urgently is a two state solution and the support of the global community for a two-state solution uh, rather than this obsessive uh, attempt to control the process to get to that. The process for getting to the two-state solution, um, the process for getting to peace, is, 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 is really up to the participants those who are immediately involved, whether this is a, whether this is a ceasefire, whether this is negotiations that lead to a ceasefire or whatever, um, ultimately the 
the aim must this time be peace, not another pause. And that and that's the point. Uh, and the the desire to sort of lodge in one echo chamber or another uh, is then having a a huge impact on national politics elsewhere in the world and a disproportionate in, uh, impact and an inappropriate impact and people who have no link to the Israeli conflict are feeling uh, anxious and disenfranchised in our own country and that must be wrong that must be wrong and we need to we, we need to pull back from the sloganizing we need to pull back from the conspiracy theories and we need to uh, and we need to recognize them for what they are they are theories um, and they are an attempt to make sense of very complex issues and uh, there, there really is only one slogan which is peace and that's reasonable uh, as for Rochdale, there's so much that needs to be done. And if Galloway is, is a name who can do that, then Galloway is by, by far the best person to, uh, to lead that debate. As for, uh, Simon Danchuk, um, you know, Churchill moved from party to party. Simon Danchuk has moved from party to party, but his behaviour at the... Uh, Hustings the other night was not admirable. If he's not got a seat at the table, that's uh, that that's presumably because his uh, his group haven't haven't done their work and haven't reached out or haven't been reached out to, and um, uh, he should he should be more than happy to sit in the audience and listen to what other people have got to say. It's um walking off in a huff is simply childish if that's the if, if that's the measure of his political response well frankly he doesn't deserve to win and that's one person that's one extra person out of the race um, but uh, the Rochdale thing is looking increasingly masculine increasingly um, contentious and increasingly lunatic and I, I think it needs to be over as fast as possible. And, and in any case, whoever is elected will only be in Parliament for a very short space of time before there's a general election. And we don't want this mess again, do we?